Alright, what's going on everybody? My name is Sh Sean, RabbitWorks JavaScript, live coding, welcome to another episode, you know the whole deal, a um, little bit different thing tonight, I don't have a webcam um, set up at the moment because new PC and just haven't really gotten around to setting up the bells and whistles of everything. And uh, this is a little bit of a diversion from our normal project. Um, wasn't able to really stream last week that much as far as like, or I didn't get a stream in last week, I guess, but that's, it's all right. Uh, how's the, uh, how's the stream looking? Oh, what the, f oh man, I don't know what's going on, but my computer, $1,600 computer apparently is not liking. <laughs> I can't ever win. Why? Okay, so uh, this project is going to be uh, a little bit of a divert from our full stack auth from scratch project. I know we're going to finish that up. We're going to be doing that. Uh, hopefully within the next week we'll get it done. But this is a project that has kind of a time crunch because it needs to be done by, well, I guess tomorrow. So it's a pretty simple thing. Basically, we're just going to be building. Well, I'm already started with it, but we're going to be building out and finishing up. Um, just a basic web app for displaying it's images. These Sean images are going to be Works. actually captured from a Raspberry Pi. And <clears throat> JavaScript, uh, uh, essentially a security or a, a webcam or a security camera, if you whatever, whatever you want to say, um, nope. um, is going to Set be... Up at the moment because, oh, holy crap. Those Where did that come The from? bells oh, and whistles of everything. There we go. Mute that. Yeah, like I said, my whole OBS setup is not not going well yet. So if, bear with me if there's any mistakes. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Josh. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so yeah, so these images are gonna be sent from. Um, no, it was just playing my. Well, I do have it open, but. Um, oh, here it was. Uh, I have it open on Twitch and it was playing the desktop audio, so I had to turn off that channel. So my bad. Um, anywho, hold on one second. Let me pull up Discord. Okay, so this project, uh, what we're working on, is called Roost Raspberry Pi Operated Optical Security Technology. Apparently, is what they went with. Basically, what they have is a webcam or a security camera that's running a wet, uh, off of a Raspberry Pi and a motion sensor. So when uh, somebody walks in front of the webcam or whatever, it takes a picture. I guess they also got some like facial recognition stuff going on with that too. Basically, what they want <clears throat> is to be able to display that on a web page, and that's where we come in. So we're just building out a simple view app right now. I started originally with a uh, node and express backend but i figured that that's kind of uh one extra unnecessary step because really what we want to do is just have this uh we want to just have this essentially just be able to like connect to the webcam or have the portal open this this web app open and if it's open then when the pi sends images or a request to the server then it'll display the image on screen that it sends with via like a base 64 uh, encoded string but if it's not running then the pictures will just go into the void so I guess it's one of those things that it's just like I mean we could go ahead and set up a backend server and set up like a cloudinary account or integration so that way you know all the pictures get saved and stuff like that but they just don't have enough time to go all that crazy with stuff and quite frankly I don't want to get involved in <laughs> such an extreme project but because I got enough stuff that I'm behind on so that being said let's look at this thing all right npm run serve uh last ended off I was uh, kind of switching out colors for the themes and you can see that the project says FBI simple security camera that was the Prototype name. So yeah. Um, let's spin this up. Yeah, 
Yeah, when I first started, uh, when I first went live and it was loading everything up, I was getting like two and a half frames per second, and my mouse was just like slowly jutting across the screen. It was super behind. And I don't know what was going on with that, but which doesn't make any sense. Okay, so this um, essentially is what we have. It's kind of a familiar layout so far. We just got like a nav bar and a couple different things going on right now. Yeah, see, it's like not liking the stream for some reason. I have to optimize stuff. And I'm not like pushing, my CPU is only at 7.4. I'm not dropping any frames, but it's just like, That should not be so delayed. What the hell? Anyways, I'm not worried about it as long as it works. This image is essentially the color scheme that I was sent. Uh, and I just wanted to have it up just so I could see like an image on here or whatever. But um, let me just bring this over here. Set that like that. Squish this a little bit more. Okay, so <clears throat> what I was doing is I was going through... no and setting the themes and stuff like that setting the theme for the app or whatever so you can see i got this black blue which is uh this color right here uh main text is just white which is kind of the center color right here h1 or the headlines and stuff is going to be this brighter teal uh, i have a dark accent that is this darker teal and then the bright uh, off accent which would be this uh, red color here so that's the color scheme we're working with and um <clears throat> Yeah, let's get to it. So basically we have two pages if we want to look. So this is a, a view app. So if we take a look, we'll start with the app.view. And, I, and uh, if I'm going kind of fast, that's because this isn't really meant to be uh, like a code along thing, mainly because I'm halfway through the project as it is. But basically, if you've watched any of my previous view streams before, it's pretty pretty simple. We just have a basic, uh, so that our app.view, I'm going to full screen this. App.view has our, you know, div with the ID of app, and this is where everything lives. Uh, it's our app container. We have a nav bar component, and we also have a router view, and then I just popped in this color chart or whatever just to have something in there. So the router view is going to be like our, where our welcome.view, which really isn't that much yet, and our dashboard, which is absolutely nothing at the moment, is going to be uh, generated in. So everything's going to be inside of the app.view, just typical router or uh view stuff no big deal here <clears throat> and if you uh, notice in the bottom right hand corner I need to activate windows because apparently the key that I bought is a uh, no go alright stream is healthy and of course, as usual, I have imported my Flexbox utility library so I can use my Flex classes. So if you're not familiar with that, I gotta make a video on that. So uh, the whole premise premise of like upgrading my PC and why I've been kind of out of the loop for the last week is because I've been upgrading my PC, well, building a new PC essentially. So the old, old PC is out in the garage as the stream machine <clears throat> for the band and stuff out there. Um, TLDR live at Lou's on Twitch if you want to check out some rock music anyways <clears throat> so I got this new computer and I've been spending the last week trying to upgrade everything and obviously I'm not done yet so <clears throat> main main thing being is I've been doing a lot of uh, video and content creation uh, as far as like gaming stuff lately and I want to start moving into more video editing in general and this whole, whole rig is gonna help with that so that being said, I think a good inaugural uh, video to edit and actually post on my RabbitWorks channel, because I usually just do live streams, would be a walkthrough and a tutorial on how to use my Flexbox utility library, because I've used it pretty much in all of my projects since I created it, and it's starting to become pretty robust as far as like banging out different edge cases and stuff like that. So I think it'd be really cool to do that as a inaugural video edit upload Dealy Bob. Okay, enough about that. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's take a look at the nav really quick. Nothing too crazy going on here. We gotta change the title because it's called Roost now. Let me just have uh, nav bar items here. Current route. What I want to do actually because um, 
we want to uh, let's pull up the app again okay so obviously when we switch between the pages um, we don't have the uh, navigation functionality in there yet so we'll have to add that but uh, when we switch between the pages we're gonna uh, load up on the welcome Hold on a second, let me just see. Router. Router index.js. Okay, yeah, so the root path, okay, is the going to be the welcome component. So I do have that set up. And then uh, dashboard will obviously be dashboard. Okay, so in the nav bar, what we want to basically say, uh, well, first let's, let's, uh, Actually, I'm going to write the uh, click handler inside the actual nav bar item because that seems more appropriate. So let's do that really quick. So inside of our outer div, we're going to add in a event listener directive. So at click is going to equal, we're going to be uh, navigate route, just like that. And we can come down here underneath props, open up our methods object. Oops, geez, I'm making all types of typos. That's alright. Methods object navigate uh, navigate route. That's what we called it. It's a function. We'll just open that up, and then we'll say this dot this this dot this dot this dot router dollar sign router dot push. My goodness, come on. Um, hold on a second, what's the text being sent? Text is sent in as capitalization, and in the router we have lowercase. So if we, uh, we say this, push uh, this dot text dot to lowercase all right let's see if that works oh man I don't I have to fix my ES lint because it keeps breaking Joshua do you know um what the setting is for this so like even if I'm missing like punctuation and stuff like that it's not failing to compile it's like this because it's just like no trailing space allowed and it's just breaking my app I don't have time to go through and like fix all this stuff right during it so if you know what that setting is in the ES lint configuration uh, let me know Let's see here here B and B I don't I don't want it to crash the app every time I have an ES lint error. I don't want that to be like failed to compile just because I have a trailing space. Like that doesn't make sense to me. And I don't know off the top of my head how to fix it <coughs> or change the setting or what setting I need to change to be able to fix that. Anywho, um I guess let's just uh <coughs> fix it. We have our trailing commas and semicolons, god forbid. No trailing space, zero. In rules. <laughs> no trailing space, zero. What about the uh, commas? Is that saying? <laughs> Rush. Uh, oh, no trailing spaces.
Nope. What does that say? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Unexpected token. Trailing comma. Excuse me. I don't get it, man. <laughs> Let's see. Does it fix it? What happened? <clears throat> That's not liking this right here. Let's see what happens. Wonderful. Uh, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Okay, so we got that kind of sorted out right now. Let's see here. I don't need that second terminal. Okay, so it is working. We're changing it. It's just supposed to fade, but... Apparently they don't want to, they just want to delay. Um, where did I heck have that rule actually? I think it's in... Uh, I don't want that in there. This nav stuff doesn't need to be in here either. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Delete all this garbage. Uh, it's a big change, so we'll break the hot reload. Ah, uh, makes sense. Thanks for the heads up. Okay. Roost. Welcome dashboard. See, now my mouse is falling apart again, and I'm down to 2.73 frames per second. One. I don't understand what is going on. Good times here at RabbitWorks. Whoa. What the hell? Why is this Google Chrome instance taking up all of my GPU? What is going on here? What the hell? There we go. Wow, imagine that. Alright, let's see what that... Did that break anything? No? Alright, cool. Look at that. Now it's all smooth and stuff. I wonder why that was going on. See, it's got this nice little fade. Oh my god. Oh, Google strikes again. Yeah? They're putting too much money into Stadia and not worrying about their uh, overused processes in Chrome. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. All right, let's get back to work. I need to get this done.
Yeah, I'm just so like logged into everything via like Chrome that it's just it's hard for me to switch over and be like, oh, I gotta do all this again. Okay, so we'll say. Let's take a look at View Dev Tools really quick. Yeah, I know View is enabled on this page. I'm writing a View application. Open the View Dev Tools. Come on now. Okay, so can't see that. Bottom. About that at the moment. Current route is undefined. This dot router <coughs> route. This dot route dot name. There we go. If we click item F bar. Okay, so there we go. Current route and oh oh oh, what's going on? Chrome, what the fuck? I shouldn't swear. I can't swear. Sorry, people. But this is really agitating. What the heck is going on? I got like two DPI right now. DPS. Come on. <coughs> I wonder if I need to turn off like accelerated hardware or something like that in Chrome. Like there's no reason why it should be taking a hundred percent of my GPU. No no reason whatsoever for that to be the case. Sorry people, I know this is supposed to be coding, but apparently it's troubleshooting Windows because winning. Video decode. <clears throat> Alright, I'm not... Okay. I think Twitch is screwing with me, to be honest. I think it's really causing issues. So I'm going to close that out. If you're on Twitch, uh, thanks for tuning in. I mean, it's still going to stream on there, but... I just won't be able to view... Oh, actually, I'm going to open the chat for... Oh! Oh, there it goes again. She's down. Oh my god, dude. What does it need to use the 3D rendering for? I don't understand. What the hell is going on? Sorry, people. I don't know what the issue is, but I guess that's what I get for being a web developer on YouTube. I wonder if it has something to do with Windows not being it. No, that has nothing to do with it. Because I've streamed on Twitch without any issue, and now it's just like falling over all of a sudden. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Let me see what I can do here. Like I'm getting 2.75 frames per second. <laughs> Through OBS. Maybe OBS is the issue. 
Get it. Anyways. That's frustrating. I wanted to stream this. God damn it. Like, I can't even move my mouse. I'm at 0 0.72 frames per second through OBS. Oh my god, dude. close out this Let's see if that helps can't even get on the X because it's so laggy oh my god look at him oh, look at the YouTube oh my god YouTube is the culprit YouTube is the culprit as soon as I close that tab it's back to like screw you YouTube <laughs> this isn't a place for your politically motivated agenda, Sean. Where? Alright, uh, let's see if this works. And if so, we'll uh, bang it out. If not, I'm um, not going to spend more time screwing around with this than I need to. So. Oh, it looks like it's falling apart again. I wonder if it's the video rendering. I wonder if it's using the GPU to try and, like, video render. It shouldn't be, but, you know. A lot of things that shouldn't be but it still does so <clears throat> all right i think we're all right for now let's see where we're at all right two seconds I don't have it up on my screen now, so I just have the chat for both. But we're gonna do it. All right. So what we can say is, I'm trying to think of the way to do this that's not super dry. Or it's not super wet. Uh, yeah, it broke even here, so it's like, you have to use camel case. It's just like, leave me alone. Okay, uh, let's just do nav bar item, text, tab that out. And we can say... Uh, BF. That was an interesting typo. BF equals that, and it's going to say not this dot. Oh, wait, no, it's uh, <clears throat> BF, and we'll say not this dot text. Oh no, uh, we'll say v if this dot Wait a second What am I doing here? I'm all confused now because I was screwing around with my web browser I 
actually, we'll do this inside of, uh, we'll, we'll go like this. We'll pass in current route as a prop. So that way we can just figure it out once. Well. I guess there's so many ways to do it. Whatever. We'll just go about it like this. Uh, this dot current route equals... Or, uh, by, or current route equals this dot current route. So we'll now have that inside of... Actually, screw that. You know what? We're gonna go like this. Sorry, I keep changing everything. I'm glad this isn't the code long. Uh, we're gonna take computed actually, take it out of the navman, <clears throat> navbar main, and bring it into navbar item under computed right here. So that way it's in here, and then we can just say underneath the click navigator, we can say v if equals this dot text does not equal this dot current route. All right, <clears throat> let's see if that does the trick. All right, I need to pull up the server again, so I closed it. Oh, not quite, but if this dot text equals Stock current route. Let's take a look at the index. Oh, <clears throat> right here. We're missing, the name needs to be capitalized. Well, for our use case, it needs to be capitalized. Oh, let's refresh it. Oh, come on. It still has the dashboard on there. So when we go to dashboard, we want welcome up here and we are at welcome we only want dashboard to appear so let's see what happens here okay so now they both disappear Oh, um, I think we might have an issue here. Let me take a look and see uh, the view dev tools on what the route is actually at. Oh. Name default. Okay, so the welcome page, for whatever reason, it's giving me this functional thing right here, and it's just defaulting this. So I think that's what the issue is. So let's take a look at that. Uh, X.js.
Oh, there we go. <clears throat> that makes sense. Okay, so... Back to that. So we need to... Add that path. Okay. <clears throat> um, so ideally, I guess when we hit refresh, or if we go to the link, we want to be able to like redirect from the root to welcome. better to conditionally render the component because technically you are always loading both right now <laughs> oh. so should I do the code split thing here that they uh, have in the example in the dot or thing probably just do that actually because I don't need to import it if we're lazy loading it like that then. Is this what you're talking about? Path redirect. Oh, cool. Okay, so good call, Joshua. My man. All right, so we got an empty object here. Let's write that redirect really quick. So if we do end up at the root route, then it'll transfer us to welcome. We'll say, uh, what is it? Path equal to slash is this erroring at me now okay, path and re uh, name I'm, I'm going to call it root, actually, because I don't want it to be misrepresented, and redirect. Welcome. Welcome. All right, cool. Okay, so, let's see now. <clears throat> so if we go to slash, or just localhost 8080 slash, it's going to redirect us. All right, cool. Good job. Props to that. All right, so we have welcome, blah, blah, blah. Let's get rid of this image because actually the uh, this is just in the middle of our actual container. Um, I got this image in here because I had to pull. I don't have any Photoshop, any Adobe products, anything like that on my pro on my computer right now either. So I have to load all that software. So I, I had to like download Firefox, load this image into my web app, and then use the color picker to pull the hex codes from it. <laughs> Talk about a workaround, huh? But okay, no worries. We can get rid of this image now since we have our colors figured out, anyways. I think we're good inside of the router for now, so we'll close that up. I'm gonna close out the package. We don't need that open. We don't need this open. We don't need the main open. Oh, we might need the main open. That's okay. We can reopen it. 
Uh, we don't need app.view open. Definitely don't need index.html. Well, we need to change that actually. This is going to be called. Uh, raspberry Pi. I can't even remember what the hell they were calling it. This is so ridiculous. Um, all right, so what am I looking at? Oh, yeah, I need to roost. Raspberry Pi operated optical security technology. Rated optical security technology. Alright, cool. So it's in there. Kind of ridiculous, but whatever. <clears throat> so this is all good and dandy now. Term. And okay, so we can be done with that. This is good for the time being. Oh, what I need to do actually is bring in the uh, the fonts that we picked. Let's see here. I'm gonna do Open Sans and this one. And to copy this font, I'm going to do the import style. It's uh, easier for me. You probably can't read that, but that's all right. It's just the font link. Uh, I'm going to put this actually in the uh, main CSS and put it right underneath the... Actually, right at the top. We're going to import everything that we need to. So, there's that. Get a word wrap on this. <coughs> Can I get a word wrap? Don't sue me. And we're gonna use Open Sans for the uh, the base font or like the content font and whatnot, just because it looks nice and it's a it's a nice pairing together. So I think it'll work decent. Uh, pull that in as well. I don't really think we're gonna need. Let's see, customize regular. I think we're just we're just gonna stick with regular whatever I'm not gonna worry about different variations of the font weight right now unless we absolutely need to okay so we have both of these fonts being imported from Google fonts and now we can uh, use the dim so let's go to the HTML and we'll just change the overall font family to use open sans and The fallbacks, of course, as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right. Let's give ourselves a refresh here. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez, please. I don't think that took. What the heck? Oh. Um. I wonder if this is breaking my app temporarily. Let me just put something in really quick. Do we need a template? No. Template. Come on. What is it doing? I wish that my... F I don't know what happened, but for whatever reason, my viewer scaffold command, like when you type in, th there's no more scaffold command, and it just gives you all three, like, I don't know what happened to it. It's kind of frustrating, to be honest. No, I don't want two scripts. <laughs> uh, style hang. We don't need that. And we'll just make sure we add scoped to it. And it's breaking again. Yay! We love it. <clears throat> oh, 
I don't want it to break on these errors. How can I just how can I set these uh, errors to just warn instead of like a breaking error? Because this is ridiculous. I don't want to deal with this the entire time. Like it's just like there's your semicolon. Are you happy now? Jeez, Louise. Alright, I need to get rid of this image. Uh, F.view. Really annoying. Yeah, you're telling me. I'll delete that. Oops. Not that far. There we go. Now we got. Okay, so you can kind of see it's not really like a black color. It's kind of like a dark greenish tint. It's kind of nice. <clears throat> Let me use the restroom really quick and we'll be right back with uh, hopefully a little bit of a uh, good marathon coding here in a minute. So thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you on the flip side. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm going to use the restroom. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're back, and uh, this actually came to me right here. This is what is going on. Our font is being overwritten, like that. So we can actually get rid of that. We can actually probably get rid of all of this stuff because it's not even really being applied. I think that was what was overwriting our stuff. I don't know why it's not loading. In the sands. Yeah. Oh. 
Let's take a look at the styles, huh? Open sands. Wait. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, what the heck is going on here? Port farm family open sands. Put it on the uh, body. Hmm. <clears throat> That's strange. Or, oh, I wonder if I need to put plus here. Oh, okay. So the plus is just a space, not like a dash or anything like that. Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise, Sharpie. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong account. Rabbit works. Silly me. Too much contact switching. Don't blame me. Blame the media. So, I guess <clears throat> something to think about going forward is I know that I've been doing the uh, Let's Learn Python series. I haven't done one in a little bit, but mainly that's because um, if anybody is in tune with the YouTube news and whatnot, there's this thing going around that's going to be implemented in the beginning of the year called uh, the Children's Online Protection Pri Privacy Protection Act. Well, it's not new. It's from a while ago. But basically saying that <clears throat> if YouTube determines that your ki your video is directed towards kids, then it's going to demonetize, de-suggest, de-publicize the entire video and all that all that good stuff. So, that being said, it's kind of tricky because, like, if I'm doing the Let's Learn Python with my daughter, like, obviously that's not really kid-directed. I guess it kind of could be seen as that. It's not really. It's just like a father-daughter, let's learn how to program thing, you know? But YouTube can take that and portray it in a way that makes it seem like it is directed for kids. And if we don't, as creators, if we don't mark... Our videos at the beginning as directed for kids and blah 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 whatnot then you can get fined as a creator and it's not you know not not any good it's not good so it's kind of confusing I'm kind of waiting to see what happens with that kind of seeing the more finite ruling behind it with the whole FTC thing so long story short that's pretty much what's going on with that if I don't continue the live or let's learn Python live coding series, then that's the reason why, but hopefully we can. We'll try and get another episode in at least before the end of the month, before Copper really takes over, but I just wanted to touch on that really quick, being a, a YouTube creator. <clears throat> I do appreciate everybody that's uh, subscribed to the channel in the last couple of months. It's really helped uh, boost numbers and all that stuff, I guess. I don't know. It's just cool to be able to reach more people, so... Say what up in the chat, leave a comment if you want, leave a like, all that good stuff. And let's get back to it. Okay, so we got our fonts working now. <clears throat> and let's see. So let's see if we can uh, set the H1. Let's set the H1 font family to. Bebas New. Kind of sh crappy, actually. They have a. Oh, that's the only one they have too. So that that looks bad. 
<clears throat> so smushed. Why would they do that? Alright. Screw that. We're just gonna use open sands. And in doing so, I'm gonna bring in actually some, um, let's see, font. Let's bring in the bold. Let me just bring in the extra bold. Extra bold. Place the link. Load. Because we got the variants of the font weights in there now. Okay, cool. Place that in there. And then in the H1, we'll just do a uh, font weight. We'll just set it at 700 for now and see where that gives us. Or what that gives us. Right on. Roost. Um... Alright, <clears throat> so I think that'll be good for that. Uh, let's close out this stuff here. App.view. I'm going to uh, actually commit this stuff so I can move on to a new branch. Project front end. I'm going to say. And in here we'll do add color scheme <coughs> update nav bar items nav bar main and router. Cool. And I can't push because I don't have push rights to it at the moment. Let me see what. That's the wrong thing. Um, mark is red. Mark is red. Okay. Now that we have that done, let's move to a new branch. So we'll say git uh, check out dash dash b, and we'll do zero zero three zero zero three underscore underscore, and we'll do welcome underscore view. Well, nope. Underscore dash view. Welcome view. Okay. Cool. So inside of here, we're gonna uh, screw around with this a little bit. Um. I just want to take a look and see where we're at with this whole thing. We need some styling going on here. Well, what we could say is, uh, we just set a view class. Um, and that will give us, so what, what this view class should give us is 100, or height, and we'll set that to 100%. So that should give us the whole thing, let me see here. Alright, we 
Where does our app set out? App is oh, app is only that big. We need to do app needs to be set at <clears throat> one hundred view height. Hashtag app height it will be set at one hundred view height. Okay, we don't want that going on with our <laughs> nav bar. Uh, let's see. Um... Height is five rem, four rem. Okay. <clears throat> so that flex one was giving it um, essentially half of the space vertically. And we don't want that. So. Fixed. Let's see. I want this like right here. So I think we'll do like two. We'll do two sections. So this will be a hero and will be FXBX flex box SPC center. Space, so align everything center. We'll set it to flex four. <clears throat> oh, now what's going on with that? Oh, <laughs> this uh, H1 needs to be inside of there, and we need to actually send it to uh. I guess I, no, we need to set it to uh, flex direction uh, column. <clears throat> and then if we add another element here, we'll just do dot tag line, just like that, and do like the bestest low level list. Asp very high security camera. That's not how you spell security. Security cure with a U. Should be a uh, flex direction column. Oh, this uh, actually needs to go on the parent element. Like that. Boom. And then we'll set this to uh, flex BX for flex box. SPC CTR for center. And uh, let's give it a flex of. Eight. Uh, too much. What up, dude? Thanks for tuning into the stream. We're having fun here. You know what, instead of doing this, I think I'm going to just put it in the same one and just use two divs and space them out um, instead of trying to put them in like that because that's giving me too much of a... Giving me too much of a spacing discrepancy that'll be too too finicky to kind of like fix in CSS, so it'll just probably be easier to go 
myself some word wrap. Come on, word wrap everything, please. Oh. <clears throat> we close this now. And now we set this to a flex direction column. This can actually, we can actually take the flex direction column from this one because we're not needing it because we only have one element on this end now. Wow, there we go. Now let's give ourselves a little bit of space here from the uh, H1. And so we'll say, give it a class. Uh, hero title. Everyone's gone. Um, okay, hero title, and we can put that uh, right down here. And let's make sure we open up our style tag. Set up lang, we want to scope it. Scoped, and then we can just put that in here. Hero title, and we'll say margin. It's one round zero. Alright, cool. We might want to boost the font up a little bit. We're going to have to change this to, uh... Roost... Inter... Interface. For the Roost interface. Vestus low levelist Raspberry Pi security camera. <laughs> Pretty neat, I guess. Um, <clears throat> you could probably change this to a uh, white, actually, and then just change this. I'm going to change this paragraph title to. Uh, a different color and accent. So we'll do class. And this is the tagline paragraph. Cool, so we have that in there. Let's open that up. Dot tagline. And what are we gonna do now? Let's see. We got color is going to be equal to var. I'll go with it. It looks pretty decent. You know, it's matching that. This is like... Now we have our dashboard. We should probably put a button in here, huh? Like... Uh, actually might not do that. What I want to do is button view dashboard class will equal btn btn um, Go to dash. So we have to do some generic styling for the uh, the button class, but we need to get the go to dash going, and I just want to push it down. So margin top, we'll give it like we'll start with five rem, give it a hundred pixel spacing. That looks all right. <clears throat> all right, so let's go to main.css, and we'll add a button class. 
And for this, we want to do... Start with some padding, we'll do 0.25 rem. Five rem, oh, not five rem, point five rem. So it's a little bit wider. Let's do font size. Font size is 20 pixels. Font family is going to be open. Open sans. Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. <clears throat> Just like that. Border radius. Radius. I'll give it a three pixel border radius. That looks pretty nice usually. Yeah, just like that. I want to make sure we get the uh, cursor pointer on there. We could do that. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put that, and they'll want a link to the uh, GitHub page too. So we'll actually do this. So we'll go in and um, welcome. We'll create. We'll actually take this X buttons div. We'll put that in there. We'll duplicate. We'll just duplicate that, and then this will be to. Uh, We'll say view on GitHub. All right, so that's that. Uh, buttons we need to give ourselves. I guess we could just tag target the go to dash in this in this case because we're not going to really really using that again. So we'll just say uh, go to dash. We'll give it a um, margin right of two rem. Push it over. Just like that. All right. So the dashboard is going to let's see. I have a click listener for it. Same with uh, this one. I'm just going to scaffold this stuff out just so it's a little bit easier to read. Oh, this does not need to be there. And I want to add my click listener. So add click equals this dot. Dollar sign router dot push pass in dashboard just like that we'll just do it in line no no big no need to write a separate method for it <clears throat> so cool Let's see if it works um no. to do just router dot push okay apparently it's router dot okay because yeah we're not inside of the actual like scope of the view component or whatever so it's just router dot push I guess all right cool um github I don't even have the link for that right now so we're not gonna worry about that um and basically what this is going to do is what we inside of here we're probably just going to have a text box for now and we'll have an image in there it's going to take you know i need to get some sort of request going from this pie in the next 24 hours apparently but uh what it's going to do is send it to this and we'll display the image here if not we're just going to say uh if no so 
Um, I'll be right back. I just need to check on something really quick, and then we'll uh, finish this up. So bear with me, and stay awesome. Keep going. We'll be right back. Do -do 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 -do. Alright, let's finish this up since uh, no one's around. No one's going to be more around anymore tonight, I think. But, anyways, thanks for tuning in. What we got to do is we got this going. And. And, okay, so inside of here. We're not going to do too much on the dashboard right now. I just want to put it in there and have it say view oops, class equals dashboard view fxbx for flexbox f1 for all of it. And then uh, we're going to add space center as well. So SPC-CTR for center. These are all abbreviations. They are available in the full form as well. So again, I'll be making a video very shortly on how to use my Flexbox utility library. If anybody's interested in that, it'd be really cool. And what in, in here, all I'm going to do is just drop it in. Uh, let's just do an H3 for the heck of it. And we'll just say... Uh, Received. Currently, no images received. Please check back. Currently, no images received. Please check back. And then, obviously, what we'll have in here is we're going to do a. Uh, We'll have an image thing in here, and it will be bound to this dot image source. Uh, let's just put it in there really quick, just so it's in there, and I have kind of like some pseudo code going. So we'll make a new data object that returns a new f new object. Inside of here, we'll just do image source, and that'll just be a blank string like that. And what we can do inside of here now is say uh, v if equals this dot oh, 
this dot image source and we'll put the uh the else on this guy so if uh image source isn't around then we will just uh target this or we'll just uh load the h3 and if it is then we'll load the image but we don't have the image yet we need to get that from the uh, raspberry pi which hopefully will be coming uh soon so we'll see what happens let's just scaffold this out screw it might as well okay there's that and let's see here what do i need to fix complaining about everything just as we always do There. Okay. So we don't have any images yet. This is going to have to work for now because I don't have the dimensions for anything. <clears throat> I don't have... I just want to see what this looks like. So we'll just do like that for now, and I'm going to target this, this class here. So let's copy that, bring it down to our styles, fix this text, and that's going to be color let's set to var. Oh, what am I doing here? Var. I call it text or bright accent okay bright dash accent just like that <clears throat> oh cool I don't know it'll work <coughs> should probably put a header on this but I'm not too worried about it at the moment the aesthetics are pretty much finished cool so I think that's gonna do it. Um, let me just uh, get at all. Oops. Get at all. Get commit dash m. Update. Welcome view and started. Dashboard view colors and awesome code. Wonderful. Now I just need uh, push rights and we can push to the server. But yeah, so that's going to do it for. We'll probably have to do some. Uh, we'll, we will be doing some uh, some media queries and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what's going on tomorrow night, but. I don't know, I haven't gotten any contact from anybody on this, and they said it was due tomorrow, so we'll see what happens, so, I don't know, screw it. Anyways, thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Live Coding with Whoever Works JavaScript. I know this has been a little bit of an uh, unorthodox stream because of the fact that I don't have most of my uh, beauties with me. I don't have, we're not working on the same projects, we're just kind of working through stuff, and uh, the CPU was giving me issues with my graphics card, I'll have to check that out for sure. But, anyways, it's been good. So, next episode, we'll probably be back into uh, full stack auth from scratch to finish that project up. And then we'll see where we go from there. I'm going to start working on that Flexbox utility uh, walkthrough video. And, yeah, cool. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of RabbitWorks JavaScript. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want more content like this. All that good stuff. Um... Share it with your buddies if they're interested in learning about view apps and how to write view code and like full stack view applications, very low level stuff, then uh, have them check out my channel because it's definitely a good resource for it. Um, 
and all that good stuff. So yeah. All right. Anyways, my name has been Sean. This has been Rabbit Works JavaScript. We are signing out. Remember, no matter where you are in the world, keep coding. Stay awesome. Catch you on the flip side. Have a good night or day, whatever time of day it is or night. Anyways, Rabbit Works out. Catch you on the flip side. Peace.